Are you thinking of selling some of your used PC parts to maybe help fund a upgrade of your PC or whatever else, or just you know looking to sell some used hardware and you want some tips and guides on how to do so? This video should help you. If you're looking to just buy some used hardware, then make sure you check out the last video in this series, which was the Used Tech Buyer's Guide. And of course, this video is still with the brilliant F7, who's gonna talk through his thoughts and experiences, uh, who is a lot more experienced in buying and selling used tech than me at a little bit later in the video. So first up, we have to cover the obvious one, which is postage and seller's fees. Now F7 is going to cover some postage cost stuff in a bit, but I want to hit on a few sort of important points first. Starting off with the seller fees, these are mostly from sites like eBay, where you're going to not only be charged for an initial listing price sometimes, especially if you use the enhanced sales features, but you'll also be charged a full 10% of your final sale price uh, for the pr privilege of using their service. Now you can use competitors like Gumtree or Craigslist if you're in the U uh, USA, but those sites don't offer any protections for buyers and sellers, unlike places like eBay. I would also mention that if you're using eBay or if you're just using PayPal in general, they'll often also charge you a 3.4 or 3.8% fee uh, if you're in the UK or US respectively and a 30 pence or 30 cents fee on top of that as well. So that's even more money that just kind of disappears. Now on the postage cost side of things, there's two ways to go about that. You can either list it with free postage, which is where you will incur the cost of the postage and that can be expensive. We'll talk about that in a second, but we also have the uh, kind of like buyer pays postage fee where you can list how much you expect it to cost to ship whatever you're selling to the buyer. Now this can actually be a detractor for potential buyers. People are actually, uh, it's a bit of a weird psychology thing, but people are more likely to buy even higher priced items, like a higher total price if it says free postage than if it's a cheaper item but with postage. So that can deter some buyers and can mean that it takes a little bit longer to sell your item uh, instead of obviously listing it with free postage but then incurring that cost too. When it comes to actually listing your item, especially on eBay, there are a couple of different ways you can go about it. The standard eBay way is an auction, which I'm sure most of you know how an auction work, but essentially people bid to outbid each other and the highest bid wins the item. This can be good because it can mean that your, uh, your final sale price can be higher than you were expecting, or if you'd set a buy it now price, for example, but at the same time, it can mean that it goes for much lower than you expect, and where you can set a seller reserve, as in if it doesn't meet a certain amount of money, it just will cancel the, the auction and you have to relist it. Uh, it can also mean that you actually get your items sold quicker than if you're going with buy it now. And speaking of buy it now, that is the other main option. So you can set a firm list price and uh, wait until someone comes uh, along who's willing to pay that amount of money and buys it. Now this can also be both good and bad. It's good because it gives you a fixed amount that you'll end up with, but it's bad because a lot of people often rather you know t try their luck at an auction and see if they can get the same item for cheaper uh, rather than going out and straight just buying your item. Now, there's actually a third sort of appendage to both of them, which is the best offer. This is essentially exactly what it sounds like. It allows someone to give an offer for the item. So if it's an auction and you accept an offer before the auction ends, the auction will immediately end and close and anyone who's bidded will be sort of discarded and the, the, the offer will become your purchaser. In the buy it now side of things, at least in my own experience, what seems to happen is that people offer ridiculously low amounts of money and because they have a total of three offers and you have three counter offers back, uh, will often happen as a bit of a sort of back and forth and you can either be quite rigid in how much you want to sell it for or you can come can meet them halfway each time or whatever else but uh, often it can lead to selling your item quicker even if it's for less money than you're expecting. And the final notes for me are on pricing and expectations. When it comes to pricing your item especially if you're doing buy it now then you really have to be careful how much you price it for. I highly recommend whether you're doing buy it now or auction that you take a look at how much the item you're selling is selling for elsewhere on the site uh, and then base your expectations and pricing off of that. There's no point in listing your old R9 280 for its MSRP of like £280 or $300 because no one's going to buy that. It's much better that you list it at a reasonable price where people will be much more likely to be interested in buying your item. On the auction side of things, there's actually a couple of ways you can go about 
that too. You can either list your item for a little bit less than you're currently expecting to get. So say you're listing your item for, or you're expecting £100 for your item. You can list it for £80 and leave it, you know, start it off there. You can also list it for zero and just hope that the market brings the value up to where you expect. And there's definitely pros and cons to both. The general thought behind why you would set it at zero is that if you set it at 80 pounds but have zero bids listed, people can see that as undesirable or as people can see that as uh, too high and they're not worth going for that first because there'll be a lot of other options which will be st still sat at, you know, like 40 pounds for the same item, for example, with a couple of bids. And they think maybe they'll try their luck at that first. A uh, similar mentality to the buy it now, but obviously with the auction, it's even more risky because they can't just secure it for a given price. By starting at zero, you can often get more money than you're expecting thanks to multiple people bidding and bringing the price up. And obviously there's also other mentality things with once you're in the, the, the bidding war, if you like, you're more likely to stay in than to join in. But either way, there's, there's lots of different options. Personally, if you're doing auction, I would recommend starting at zero, but that's just me. Now with that said, I'm gonna hand over to the brilliant F7 who's gonna give you a few more tips and uh, thoughts as well. Hey folks, so at this point you might have decided what you're going to sell and which platform you're going to sell on and you might even have a realistic idea of the price that you want. So what else is there to consider? Well first off you're going to want to make your listing or advert look appealing. I'm talking quality photos in a well lit room and the thing that you're selling being cleaned up. At the end of the day you want people to want your item a lot more than the listing next to you. If it's say a graphics card or CPU you want to show it running. Say a link to a 3D Mark score from your system can go a long way to giving potential buyers confidence in what you're trying to sell. And finally, you're going to want to be honest in a listing. If you try and fudge details or bend the truth, buyers will figure it out. And either your item won't sell, or you're going to have the buyer claiming their money back, and it's going to be eBay and PayPal that you'll be dealing with rather than Mr. Hobbs who bought your GTX 960 after you falsely advertised it as being great for 4K in Battlefield 5 at ultra settings. But when you're sure you're going to be showing your components at their best, it's then time to make sure that when your item does sell, you're covered for it. And you also want to reduce the chance of unscrupulous individuals trying to take advantage of you. What service you post your item through is often as important as choosing where to sell the item in the first place. Firstly, you're always going to want to send your item recorded delivery when it sells. This just means that any buyer is going to need to sign for the package before accepting it. You're going to be notified of the delivery and you get peace of mind that a buyer's not going to try and claim it never turned up and force your hand into giving him a refund. I was caught out a couple of years back by accidentally sending a refurbished GTX 560 first class instead of second class recorded. The buyer claimed it never arrived and as annoyed as I was, there was absolutely no comeback for me. As per eBay's selling policy, since I had no proof of delivery, I had to refund him. So you really need to cover yourself with which postage you choose. For items under £50, using recorded delivery means that you can get compensation up to £50 if it doesn't turn up or if it turns up broken. For items over £50 in value, you're going to want to use special delivery if you use the Royal Mail, which costs about £7.60 for up to 500 grams, say a CPU, £8.60 for up to 1 kilogram, a small box GPU for example, and £11 for anything up to 2 kilograms. Say a fully boxed larger GPU and accessories, and this offers up to £500 compensation for lost or damaged items. Non-Royal Mail couriers can also be used directly through eBay and can actually save you some money, and each of these items can be specced up with enhanced compensation, which covers you up to the selling cost of your item, i.e. if you sell a GPU for an arbitrary price then you can spec compensation up to that amount. And a final note on postage, if you're selling on eBay, buying your postage directly through eBay and printing the label yourself is a little bit cheaper than buying postage from a post office. Not much, but if you're selling a load of stuff, it can really add up over time. Finally, and most importantly, my best piece of advice to you would be to sell when it makes most sense to do so. If you're a regular user of eBay, check your email, check your spam filters, because eBay often sends out promotional offers. 
and this can dramatically increase the amount of money that you make from a sale. The one that I always use is the £1 max sell and promotion fee. Now it might not seem a lot to cut your eBay fees just down to £1 or $1, but if you're selling a more expensive item, for example say a £300 or dollar graphics card, it means that eBay's cut will only be £1, rather than the 10%, which in this case would be £30 or dollars, which leaves you with significantly more money at the end of the transaction. Now this allows you to do one of two things. First off is price it at £300 or dollars, just exactly as you originally planned, or you could reduce the card price to £280 or dollars, which is much more likely to sell quickly if everything else is priced about £300, and using the £1 max selling fee offer, you would still pocket more than if you sold the card for £300, but had to pay the standard seller's fee. Like the advice I gave on the buyer's guide, preparation is key, coupled with the use of any promotional offers that you can find. The old saying that time is money is absolutely true, and putting in a little bit of extra preparation in your listings, as well as understanding and using the offers and tools that are available to you, can dramatically increase the amount of money that ends into your pocket at the end of a sale. Now I do know that selling online can be daunting if you've never done it before, but if you take your time, understand what you're doing, and take all the necessary precautions to cover yourself, it really isn't bad once you get to grips with it. If you've got any questions, or especially if you're a seasoned tech seller and you have any suggestions or tips or anything else for the community that you'd like to share, definitely leave those in the comments down below. Of course, if you want to support the channel, then make sure you check out the links in the description and go subscribe to F7 as well, where I'll leave a card on the end for you and go check out his GPU cleaning video, which is a great way to get some extra performance out of an old used graphics card. As I said, there are plenty of links in the description down below. There's Patreon if you want to support me directly, or Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links, which don't cost you anything but massively help me out. You can also check out the merch if you want hoodies, not like this one, or the uh, you know, Humble Bundle links for cheap games which support charities too, or private internet access, which is a great and cheap VPN. You can also hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, check out the other videos over there. Now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.